Um, so the reading today is John chapter 10, verses 1 to 10. Um, and if you have the church Bibles, it can be found on page 757. The shepherd and his flock. I tell you the truth. The man who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The man who enters by the gate is the shepherd of his sheep. The watchman opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all of his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but they did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, I tell you the truth, I am the gate for the sheep. All who ever came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Thank you so much, Molly. Please keep your Bibles open there at John chapter 10. When Jesus says that he is the bread of life, I can see why I need him. I can see why I need him to be the food that keeps me going forever. I'm the bread of life. Makes sense. When Jesus says, I am the light of the world, I can see why I would need him. I, I'd need him to be the light who leads me. Through the darkness. Makes sense. But today, Jesus says, I am the gate. And I'm thinking, you're the gate? <laughs> what does he mean? I mean, what kind of gate is he even talking about? Is he talking about school gate? Is he talking about side gate around the side of your house? Is he talking about... Like a, the sort of gate you find in a field you have to climb over on a walk. I am the gate. Why do I need Jesus to be a gate for me? In our reading, Jesus is talking to the religious leaders, the Pharisees. And they are saying, hey, Jesus, who do you think you are? Why are you telling everyone to follow you? Why are you telling everyone that they need you? And Jesus says, very truly. In other words, listen up carefully, because here's why everyone needs me. And he paints a picture with words. And he says, think of a sheep pen. We've got a sheep pen. Think about a sheep pen, and the thing about a sheep pen is it has a... And think of a sheep in it. Have we got anyone, anyone who might uh, feel like they could volunteer to be a sheep? Anyone? Uh, Sean, perfect, thank you. I don't know why everyone's laughing, I mean, it's a sheep, oh. Just go into the pen, and then we'll close the gate, and you're locked up in there. <clears throat> okay, sheep pen, sheep gate, and outside the pen would be a watchman, and the watchman would keep watch. And you know who the watchman would be watching out for? The watchman would be watching out for thieves and robbers... Thieves and robbers who, who, who are trying to steal the sheep. Can you believe that? 
So can I just say, if you see any thieves or any robbers, you've got to let me know, okay? You can... No, <laughs> behind me. No, I mean, in real life, not, not here. I mean, if you saw a thief or a robber, you've got to let me know, okay? If you see one. Behind me? Behind me? There's not, there's not one behind me at all. There's, 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 not, there's not a thief or a robber behind me. I'll check, I'll check the other way, shall I? I'll just check. No, there's absolutely nobody there. You're having me on. You're pulling my leg. It, 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 we are. Oh, 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 oh. Right. There was. So, where were we? Oh, yeah, the sheep pen with the sheep, the gate and um, the watchman keeping watch. And the thing about thieves and robbers is the thing about them, you see, is the thing about thieves and robbers is, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They, they wouldn't go in through the gate. They would try and climb in, because I've got the gate covered, you see. The only person who would go in through the gate would be the shepherd. And Jesus will talk more about the shepherd next week. For this week, he wants us to think about the Gate. Life in the pen, as you can see, was a bit cramped and a bit smelly, and there was no food. So Sean always looked forward to when the shepherd would come, and when the shepherd would come, he would open the gate with a little, little creak and lead Sean out through the gate into the fields where there was fresh air and delicious Food for Sean to enjoy. Who doesn't love a bit of parsley? <laughs> Sean does. Knows what's good for him. And the thing about thieves and robbers, you see, is they, they wanted to get short. They want to get Sean out of the pen but they weren't going to lead him into the fields with fresh air and delicious food, were they? Where do you think they were going to lead Sean? They were going to take him home, weren't they? They were going to roast him for dinner, weren't they? So every day, Sean would sit there in his pen, cramped, smelly, no food, and stare at the gate. And when the gate started to open, when he heard the little creak, his heart would start to pound with excitement because what did it mean? What did it mean when the gate started to open? It would mean it wasn't a thief and it wasn't a robber. It was the shepherd come to take Sean out through the gate. And what is through the gate? What's through the gate? The field and the fresh air and the food. And the people, they don't really get what Jesus is on about. Did you see that in verse 6? Jesus used this figure of speech. He painted this picture with words, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. So he goes, look, okay, there's a sheep in a pen and a watchman, and there are thieves and robbers. And then, no, 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 stop this, okay? Just enough. You can take a joke too far. <clears throat> And there's a gate. There's a gate. And they're like, so? So there's a gate. Why does that mean people need you? And Jesus says, verse 7, very truly I tell you, I am the gate. Do you see what Jesus is saying? Well, let me explain. If you are a sheep in a sheep pen and it's cramped and it's smelly and there's no food and you really want to go out into the fields and the fresh air where there's parsley, what is the only way out? Through the gate. Yeah. And Jesus says we're all a bit like the sheep in the sheep pen. We are all like Sean which means I need to back up a little bit, uh, way back when God made the world, way back in the Garden of Eden, human beings enjoyed life, really enjoyed it. It was all fields and fresh air and, and delicious food. It was the life they were made for. 
It was paradise. But then do you remember, Adam and Eve, like sheep, went astray. And they walked out on God, and that's what the Bible calls sin. And now we live in a a world that's in the grip of sin. And life in the grip of sin is a bit like life in a sheep pen. It's cramped, and it's smelly, and there's no food. And there are thieves, and there are robbers who want to roast us. And so what... No, 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 we've had this, we've done this. We've done it to death. And so what we need is we need someone to save us. So verse 9, Jesus says, I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. Do you see what he's saying? I am the way to be saved from the cramped pen, the grip of sin. God promised, God promised one day he would come and he would save us. And he would lead us out into the fields and the fresh air and the delicious food. And he would lead us out of the grip of sin into life. The life we were made for. The life we long for, actually. It would be paradise once again. And Jesus says, you need me because I am the gate. The only way for the sheep to get out of the pen into the field is through the gate. And the only way for you to get out of the grip of sin into life, into the life you were made for, is through me, says Jesus. And because Jesus really cares about us, he warns us about other people who will try and get us out of the pen. And he's talking about the religious leaders of his day, the Pharisees. And he says they they may look like religious leaders, but the truth is they're just thieves and robbers. So, just, no, 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 no. Uh, Sorry, sorry. Um, So what he says is verse 10. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. They will say, they will say, we can save you. Come with us, little sheepy. We'll give you life. But the truth is, they've only come to steal and kill and destroy, to roast you. And maybe for us, it's not the Pharisees, but it's different spiritual religious leaders who say, oh, don't don't go through the gate. No, you don't need Jesus. There's, There's lots of ways to a deeper life. Or maybe for us, it's friends at school or at uni saying, oh, don't go with Jesus. Don't be such a loser. He'll just spoil your life. He'll just make you miserable. Sometimes it's the teachers at school or the lecturers at uni, isn't it? They make you feel stupid for following Jesus. Oh, you surely don't believe that old fairy tale. It's it's the 21st century. And sometimes it's just the power of the adverts, isn't it? The beautiful dresses and the lovely holidays that we see on Instagram. And we think they are the way out to the life that I really want. And Jesus says they might all seem like people who are trying to save you. They might all seem like people who are offering you life. But they will destroy you. Because they are not the gate. The only way out of the pen into life is through the gate. The only way out into life is through me, says Jesus. Do you see how he goes on? Verse 10, I've come that they may have life and have it to the full. It's funny, isn't it? We think, we think Jesus has come to destroy life and everyone else has come to give us real life and Jesus says it's just the opposite they will destroy you I've come to give you life and the life he's come to give us is not boring and it's not miserable do you see what he says it's life to the full you see what what does he mean well what's your idea of a full life I've got this balloon here I'm just going to tell you I'm not going to pop it okay Not like, you know, mad. Um, 
What is your idea of a full life? Is it more money that would make your life full? Is it um, if you were more popular at school, make your life full? Is it if you had a more fulfilling job? Or a house with more space, a garden perhaps? More holidays in the sun. If that's your idea of the kind of things that would make life feel full, that's a life that sooner or later goes flat. And in John's Gospel, Jesus keeps talking about how he's come to bring life. Only the life he brings never goes flat. You say, what is this life he's talking about? Well, there's one time when Jesus is praying to his Father in heaven. And here's how he talks about this life. He says to his Father in heaven, he says, This is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Do you see? The life he has come to bring is eternal life. It lasts forever. But it's not just something we look forward to after we die. Because eternal life isn't just about being in heaven. Did you catch that? Eternal life is about being in a relationship with God. It's about knowing God. And knowing the one true God starts today. Now. And when you know God, you have a life that is full. Because that's the life we were made for back in Eden. That's paradise. And it doesn't mean that you'll always be successful and you'll always be healthy or you'll always be wealthy. Your days could be really hard. But if we know God, then we have a life that is full. Let me, let me try and explain with the balloon again. Um, one of the reasons we feel so empty is because we long to be loved. But if you know God, you are deeply, deeply loved. So your life is full. Because you're free from the grip of sin and there's no more guilt and there's no more shame. You are just deeply, deeply loved and accepted. And the person who loves you is the most beautiful and the most creative and the most powerful and the wisest and the kindest and the most patient person in the whole universe. And they love you. They love you. And they love you with a love that will never stop. If you know God, you have a life that is full. Because you have the love that everyone else longs for. Or, do you ever get anxious about things? You get that funny knot in your tummy just before a game of football? Or when you think about Monday mornings? Or when you think about the music exam you've got to take, or the presentation you have to make. And you get this knot in your stomach, because you think, you've got to do it really well. I've got to do it really well to, to prove myself. And then if we don't do it really well, we feel really worried, don't we? We feel really worried that, about what everyone thinks of us. And, and so we're, we're anxious, and life feels pretty flat. But you see, when you know God, you, you don't have to prove yourself to anybody because it doesn't matter what anybody says because God says you are precious to him. It means you're not playing football to prove yourself. You're not doing your exam. You're not going to school. You're not even going to work or anything to prove anything to anyone. And that just takes the pressure off and you start to enjoy things a bit. And life feels full again, because you know God. And when you know God, another thing your life is full of is, is full of wonder. Because a lot of people have no wonder 
in their lives. So sometimes people just walk to school through the autumn leaves, and they're stomping through the autumn leaves, and the autumn leaves are just autumn leaves. No! God made those leaves, and he made all their different colors, and you, <laughs> you know him. You know the God who made all the leaves, and guess what? He made all those leaves with all those different colors for you to enjoy. So even as you walk to school, your life is filled with a kind of wonder, a kind of, wow, thank you, Lord. And the thing about this life with God is that we will never, ever, ever go flat. Because even when we die, the life that Jesus gives us is a life we don't lose. What happens is we see him face to face. We get to know him better and better. And we live with him in the paradise that we were made for. And instead of getting flatter and flatter, life just gets fuller and fuller and fuller. And friends, isn't it tempting to, to look at other people and think, oh, I wish I had what they have. And what Jesus is saying is that if you have me, you may not have the talent they've got or the style they've got or the money they've got. In some ways, you may have very little. But if you know God, the one true God, you know him, you have a life that is full. It will never go flat. It will always get fuller and fuller and fuller. And friends, this week, be all kinds of people at school or at uni, work or at home, who will try and offer you life to the full. And they will say, oh, you don't want to go with Jesus. You don't want to go through the gate. You want to come with us. Come with us. And it would be very tempting to go along with them. And Jesus says, will you see the truth of what they are? They are thieves and robbers. And they, oh, no, 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 we, 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 we just stop this now, okay? Just, so, I'm sorry. So we're coming to the end, right, okay? <laughs> sorry. They may not mean to, but they will destroy you, says Jesus, because they are offering something they cannot give you. They cannot give you life to the full, because life to the full is knowing the one true God who made us. And the only way to know the God who made us is to go through his son. And that's why Jesus says, I am the gate. So can I ask, do you want to get out of the pen? Do you want to get out of the grip of sin? And do you want to know the God who made you and live the life you were made for, the life you actually long for? Do you want that? Go through the gate. Turn to Jesus today. Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? And can I just say, if you've never done that before, if you've never turned to Jesus before, you've never gone through the gate to begin life, I'd love to talk to you more about what that looks like, what that means, how to do that. I'd love to give you a, a, a book to read that will tell you more about him and the kind of life, the real life that he offers. So catch me at the end, but for now, we'll pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you are the gate, that you call us to go through you to know God and to enjoy life. And we pray in the week ahead that you would help us by your spirit not to doubt that, but to know that it's real. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. And Mike.
Would you come up? What have you got? I've got a few questions. Okay. Uh, and one which was voted up from one of our junior church okay, members let's hear it. Great. simply starts with, how do I find Jesus the gate in my life? What a, what a wonderful question. Um, how do I turn to Jesus? Well, one of the reasons we're working our way through these sections of John's gospel is because that's where we, we, we see the things he's saying about himself. That's where we hear him speaking to us. A bit like when somebody um, writes to you a, a card or something, they're speaking to you. But this speaking, uh, Christians believe, it's not just a dead old book. It's a book that comes to life by the Spirit of God. So the first place to look is in the Bible because the Bible is the Jesus book. It's where Jesus tells us about himself. It's where he speaks to us. But it may be you just need to speak to him and say, Jesus, thank you that you're the gate. I want to turn to you and go through you into life. I want to know God through you. And if that's a prayer you pray, that's a prayer he will love to answer. And you will begin a new life. And it would be like you were once in the pen and now you're out in the field. And here's a clarifying okay. question, and it quotes, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep, and all who came before me are thieves and robbers, mm. but the sheep did, did not hear them. And who is it that Jesus is referring to when he says those that came before him? Mm. I think it, it's, he's got the, um, the Pharisees in his sights. So I, I think my sort of best thought is it's the Pharisees, it's all the sort of people they've been hearing up until now, the, the religious traditions of the Pharisees um, before he came along uh, were in fact thieves and robbers. Mm. All right. And here's, um, here's one that's flown to the top, okay. which is how can I come back to the gate when I feel like the robbers have already gotten me? Oh, what a lovely question. Let, let's not, um, it's a beautiful picture Jesus paints, but let's not feel kind of trapped by the picture. But that's a lovely way of thinking about it, isn't it? Sometimes that, you know, it feels like the robbers have got me. Uh, call out to Jesus because Jesus says that um, he will never let go of his people. You're safe in his hands. And you might think, I'm really being pulled away. I'm being pulled in this direction by what people at school are saying or people at university. But actually, Jesus won't let go of you. So just, again, turn back to say, Jesus, hold on to me tightly. Don't protect me from what they're saying. Uh, help me not to hear what they're saying because I know it's not true and I know it will destroy me. Um, but those are the kinds of prayers that Jesus loves to, loves to answer. And I think this, this last one okay. is somewhat related to it, okay. quite, cl quite close, which is, how can I get back into the gate if I feel like I've been stolen? Very similar yeah, to back what into you the just gate. said. Well, just, the, again, the gate, it, don't sort of overthink it, but the, Jesus is saying, I am the gate, I am the way to life, come back to me. Go, go, you know, What's your way through into the field? Through Jesus. Was I sort of trying to get life another way? I was trying to, I was trying to get life by... Whatever it is for you, um, for, for me, it tends to be, um, you know, I just want, I, I want to be out, outside and in, in lovely places. And I think that's the answer, and it isn't. Um, so just don't keep going there and keep going, no, I need to go through Jesus to life. So I need Jesus, what would you have for me? What would you give me? Tell me about the life you want me to live. And that is life in all its fullness. Keep coming back to Jesus. Thank it you. sounds like we're in the Sunday school, but it is true. It's it is true. true indeed. And yeah. it's life to the full. Yeah. So thank you, Mike. Yeah. All right. And now um, Will is going to come and